Let it whip. Whip it, baby. Yeah. Whip it, right. Whip it, baby. Baby Billy is Bible bonkers. What? Nothing. Just I'm just practicing my enunciation. <laughs> baby Billy's Bible bonkers. I'm former movie trivia schmodown singles champion Marisol McKee, aka Lady Justice. And I'm former movie trivia schmodown singles champion Adam the Coyote Collins. Welcome back to Champs on Film. We're back. Did you miss us? We both went to go see the Marvels recently. Mm -hmm. I was quite excited for that movie. And we both enjoyed it. Yeah. It was well worth the watch. Yeah. Um, But we're kind of getting into this zone where it's now the second week after this movie came out. But we've been dreading kind of this exhaustive conversation outside of the film. And the movie itself... Pretty wide release. It is now the 33rd MCU movie that has come out. And these movies are always big money, big returns. That has been the expectation. And the Marvels this weekend is already becoming notorious for being one of the biggest failures in that regard for this universe, for this franchise. What's a little frustrating is that the movie, um, regardless of its quality or lack thereof to other people, it didn't seem like this one had an opportunity to exist on its own terms. What is clickbaity over the last several years is to talk about specifically link a film's success or lack of success to the demographic that it's representing, to what the main characters are, who, what mm-hmm. pockets those main characters represent, and hinge and compare somehow its monetary value to the directly link it to the value of seeing characters that are non-white, non, non-straight, non just, just mm-hmm. unconventional characters on screen. There is this undercurrent, this effort to always tie the conversation into that. And I've seen all over the spectrum, I'm seeing some people really angry about this film, like big comic book fans really, really offended to their core about this film. And people who are just offended because they're offended because this movie didn't make money and they, and they have their reasons. And, and there are also people who are avid defenders of this movie as well um and this movie can do no wrong i'm lying kind of in the middle i'm not as heavily invested as the M- in the mcu and the um continuity of its storylines as much as of, of a lot of deep fans are i knew that the this train was going to kind of go off the tracks at some point and for me it's just kind of taken the expectation for me off of them in a lot of ways and when i see one like the marvels that is cutting a lot of corners narratively and is shortchanging these characters who I am really interested in seeing, but also in a way that didn't piss me off. I think, I think a lot of this too has to do with Disney, you know, um, eating its own tail a bit. Um, We've seen that happen with a lot of, a lot of big properties. Uh, It's not exclusive to, to this, but I do think uh, with Marvel, I think it's going through uh, some unique growing pains right now because of how much saturation there is with this content. Um, I enjoyed Ms. Marvel a lot. WandaVision yeah. was solid. Um, but I also think that there's an expectation now with people at home that they kind of get used to this idea that this stuff is accessible uh, through time. The Marvels I wanted to see in theaters because I was excited about it. But I think a lot of people are waiting to watch it at home. That's fine. Can we mm-hmm. talk about like kind of what you're saying. Like it's, we're taking this shift. Um, the platform is changing. And I love the word, uh, the expression you specifically said, growing pains. Mm-hmm. We are going through growing pains with the MCU. There seems to always be, I see the Marvels as this movie heading towards th- its its release date and trying to just get through that door and get through that archway. Mm-hmm. But there are just like seas of just soldiers and warriors already there just in the way ready to just hack at it and fight and quarrel over Steer it just the to, narrative just to yeah, yeah just to just block its way from just passing through as a normal movie all right this is mm-hmm. a comic book movie you guys and that, that's not i don't mean that to be reductive but i will say this um aman Vellani, bless her first off first off always gets it right (laughs) the absolute star of the marvels in the first place fantastic the high point of that movie i think that is across the board whether you Mm. hated that movie or love that movie or were somewhere in between i think she's one of the most consistent she's what everybody you're seeing everybody say and i fully back it up that she's a star 
if anybody was going into that without having seen Miss Marvel, it would make you want to go watch Miss Marvel. It to works get more both background. ways, I think. Yeah, I think if you've it, seen it or not. Right, exactly. And it, it interests you. It makes you want to go out and seek the show. And it just pays off enormously if you have seen the show. Mm -hmm. um, uh, especially for her family, because her family, if you yeah. like them in the movie, they're so much even more fleshed mm -hmm. out in the show. Um, but my point is that even she has the right perspective about this. Look to this girl. She's the youngest person in all this equation, and she has the right idea about it. She's out there saying... The what what we've been saying essentially, she's like, I don't I don't need to get wrapped up in these box office numbers. She's like, yeah. that's not the narrative, and she, and she's like, that's Bob Iger's problem, which she's absolutely right. And what she points on is something that has been frustrating me to no end. And I, st as a film lover, as somebody who's been living their whole life loving films, it drives me crazy that we're in this stage. Not only is it these war warmongering trigger happy fandoms mm -hmm. sides of fandoms that are ready to go to war over every aspect of these films but the average film lover is talking as if they are a ceo box office is relevant to the industry and that's a separate conversation entirely and that's a relevant conversation um uh you know when you're talking about the industry and you know the possibility of sequels and things that is fair to talk about but when you use it as leverage to say whether a film is a success or not, I think that's shallow and pointless. And when it comes to this movie in particular, I think it's going to find a wider audience when it starts streaming. Um, a lot of things do. Um, and I don't think that is even a measure of its success. I just think over time, it'll be exposed more to a wider audience. Now, I think there's two sides to it, though. I think there's those of us who are obviously very tuned into this conversation, even on a casual basis, who talk about the movie and the box office and how those things correlate or don't. But I also think there's a lot of people who, you know, are casually aware of this movie that they've seen the Happy Meal toys and they're like, oh, OK, what's this? But um, I just think it's going to find more of an audience over time. And how much that translates to money uh, isn't important to the people who are proud of this movie, mm -hmm. like Iman Vellani, who said specifically the people I care about enjoyed it. And that's all that matters. I think it's the best possible thing you could say. Yeah, for sure. And there's always, we're always trying to have a definitive statement. People are always trying to rewrite the laws. Everybody thinks they're suddenly a film historian or or a college professor suddenly when we're when one <laughs> film comes out at a time and we're like, see, this is why this can't happen. Or this is proof. It happens in both ways. Stop speaking in absolutes. There's a lot of things to factor in. A lot of people have been mentioning um, the lack of promotion because of the SAG strike, which again, wouldn't be talked about with other films, but because it's this particular film, it's been under the microscope. People have been mentioning um, the negative press, um, specifically that has been some, some especially um, media publications have been putting out about Nia DaCosta leading up to um, the film release and Disney themselves separating themselves from that, kind of letting, le allowing her to kind of be this little scapegoat um, for some negative buzz to try to distance themselves from their own product. Honestly, part of me is glad that Bob Iger didn't just write this movie off uh, Warner Brothers style. I was a little scared of that, like like six months ago, um, when the thing with Batgirl happened, and and um, I think it sets a very scary precedent. So I think the movie being released, I'm I'm glad. Like that's step one. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think you make a good point about you know with the strikes happening and promotion being kind of. Uh, held at bay. It's weird. You know, you have something like Ahsoka, which was only on Disney Plus. And, you know, we have to take them at their word, but apparently it did fairly well streaming wise, uh, you know, did what they wanted it to do more or less. But, um, you know, they couldn't actively promote it. But and neither could they with Loki. Because we're in 2023, because we're in this saturation of blockbusters, the most interesting thing has become to just talk about how much money these 33rd editions in the series are making this 12th mm -hmm. edition in the series is making like we have seen now mission impossible seven the story was that it didn't make as much money as it should fast and furious 10 it didn't make as much money as it should transformers what eight who get who cares all these elements are valid to discuss in general as points of interest to talk about a movie but the extent to which they're dominating the conversations is troubling. Back when superhero movies were a little more rare, this movie would have popped like crazy. You know, like uh, the 2000s, the 90s. 90s. Um, very much. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think Captain Marvel was intimating at that, trying to like grasp at that concept with its nostalgia. But this movie 
just with the energy, the soundtrack, and the performances. I really enjoy a lot of the editing in this. Yeah. Um, you know, even though there are big jumps to things that make no sense, I, I it's <laughs> there are things that happen in in like within a vacuum in certain scenes that are just so tight and cool. Right. Yeah. Like I enjoy the Marvels more than Captain Marvel, which I just I mm -hmm. revisited it right before seeing the Marvels. And I was just so frustrated. There's so much goodwill going into that movie, but I'm so frustrated by how dull um that first act is terrible. That first act drives me crazy with just, and Carol Danvers has just gotten the raw end of the deal in both of her MCU movies. Her It's just a very rushed narrative with her. They have not been giving her character and her story the fleshing out and the time to breathe that Thor, Captain America, Iron Man, obviously, that these other Avengers, really important Avengers have gotten. And it's tragically obvious in just the breakneck pacing of her movies and the characterization in those movies. Um, but I will say this, that the Marvels was just a step up and like you said, really tightening it in. Um, um, like the action scenes, the energy is just so there in this movie. All the time in between that you're watching them make these like plot jumps and just people are just, and then Carol and then Monica are just, explaining things that just like there's no context or why she knows about these ancient artifacts or what she's what she's doing they're just explaining things and the movie's just moving on that's recognizable as weak writing yeah. and 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 corner cutting um but it's also really really kind of it's also like okay if this is what we're doing this is as fluffy as a saturday morning cartoon if this is what we're doing this is what we're doing and for a less discerning um marvel fan like myself that works. Don't sell yourself short. Oh, thank this you. This movie, um, <laughs> what I like about the way they set up Carol Danvers is it felt like she was like Spock on his own. Like I love, like when he's out <laughs> yeah. on his own searching through the galaxy and, and Superman when he goes on his soul searching, you know, mm -hmm. many times. Yes. And, and I love, the, I love the way her ship feels like an apartment um, and it feels, you know, like her space. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think my favorite, scenes might even take place in that spaceship yeah um just conversations uh a really yes. fun montage even where the script kind of undersets it these actresses are wonderful mm -hmm. um Iman Vellani is a standout and bless bless Tiana Paris for doing for for being that strong of a performer that she can bring out the quirks that make you still laugh and invest in this character even though you're like this like girl they got you on a conveyor belt in this movie but sure it's working and let's be straight like like there's there's things that i saw in this movie that i think some people are tearing apart where i was like i've seen these in like 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 this the scene where they go to the planet and everybody's singing i left my ass off during that oh scene. i dug that and that scene could easily have been dropped in one of the new thor movies or in one of the Guardians movies, and it would and have brought down the house. I've read a few complaints about how that's that's out of nowhere and it doesn't seem to go anywhere. I think that's what I love about it the that's, most. That, yeah. Again, again. Yeah. Also, the Flurkins. Yes. The Flick Flacks. They, the up, they up the ante with the <laughs> octopus cats, which is fun. Uh, Goose is back and as sweet as ever. Out of nowhere and yet, and yet absolutely delightful. Yeah, that's either going to work for you or not. I think we had a similar conversation about the babies in the Flash. Yeah, right. Just get on board right. or, or move on. I, I, I don't need. I, I get why people think things are dumb. I like them thinking think they're dumb, it. but you know, I, I just. Like, I kind of like dumb things. And that is also the nature of fandom. I get it. There's no right way to engage with these characters. Uh, there's no uh, uh, origin point that's better than another. Cartoons were a big entry point for me with superhero stuff. So all the all the '90s cartoons uh, from DC and Marvel got me invested in the characters, which led me to comic books, which made me want to watch the movies that it, that were coming out at the time. It just it's and then sometimes the movies are how you get into certain characters. Tons of of comic book characters in the past twenty years I've learned about because they got a movie announced. That's what's fun about comic book adaptations for me is getting that iceberg story, a tip of the iceberg storytelling. And then if you want to learn more, you can. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about Star Wars as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, And that's uh, yeah. what the Marvels was. Yeah. The Marvels was many, many people's introductions to these yep. women, to these characters. It was, it was a fast and loose buddy movie about these characters teaming up. And in that regard, I think it's impactful as an entry point, um, a memorable entry point, and mm -hmm. people getting sucked into the fun and the good spirit of these characters. 
Glad we saw this in theaters. We saw it in a Dolby theater, so we shook a little bit. That's Boom! All, that was dope. Yeah, that was perfect for all the <laughs> sonic booms and the sound mixing was stupendous. Space shots yeah. going on there. That was that was wonderful. I've seen some superhero movies that are honestly more on just the mixed noise side. The tran- they you know, they reach that Transformers level of cacophony, but this love that word. This uh, was really well mixed, especially with the soundtrack. Um, so I really was glad. Soundtrack was fun, much yeah. better utilized than in Captain Marvel. Let's just say that. Mm-hmm. The needle drops were genuinely fun in this. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for hanging out with us while we pontificate about the Marvels. We need to get a few things off our chest. The award season, Oscar season, holiday season, it's all revving up. So we got a bunch more videos coming down the tubes. You can follow us at uh, X or on Instagram. We are Champs on Film. And you can also follow us on X individually or on Letterboxd. I'm Marisol underscore Mariah. I'm Eisenthor. Seriously though, thank you for watching. We're glad to be back and we'll be back with more soon.